This section will provide a code walkthrough of SAMHSA's high-level API. Similar to the low-level API, writing an application in the high-level API is also a two-step process. The first step is defining your inputs, your outputs, and your stores using descriptors. This step is very similar where we'll use the system descriptor to describe the Kafka clusters that we want to interact with and the input and output descriptors to describe the streams that we want to interact with. Once we have described our inputs and outputs, we are now ready to describe our processing logic. The processing logic in the high-level API can be described in terms of message streams and operators. Message stream, as the name implies, simply represents a logical stream of messages. You can obtain a message stream in two ways. One option is to call get input stream by passing in your input descriptor. For example, if you have an input descriptor for a Kafka topic called page view event, you can use get input stream to obtain its corresponding message stream. Once you have an existing message stream, you can use our operators to transform it and get new message streams. Imagine we are a video content provider and we want to track analytics on how long videos get viewed by our users. One way to do this is to have the video player periodically emit events into Kafka and then have a SAMHSA based pipeline to compute video analytics. The first step in building our pipeline is to describe our inputs. In this case, we'll consume from a topic called as player position changed event. We will obtain a message stream that corresponds to this input descriptor and then we'll apply the filter operator to only filter out the events that we care about. Let's assume we only care about videos matching a specific criteria. Messages in Kafka can be partitioned arbitrarily, so we'll need to repartition the data so that all messages for the same session ID end up in the same partition. Next, we'll define a windowed aggregation function where we'll compute some statistic based on each session. Then we'll format our results using a map operator and write the formatted output to a Kafka topic using the send to operator. Here's the actual pipeline in action. Any application that's written using the SAMHSA high-level API has to implement a stream application interface. The interface is quite simple. It just includes a single method called describe where you can specify your application. As we saw earlier, specifying an application consists of two parts, specifying your inputs and outputs, and then defining your processing logic. In this case, we are reading from a topic called as player position changed event from the Kafka tracking cluster. Similarly, we are writing to an output topic called as video play analytics event, and we are writing to the Kafka queuing cluster. Let's now look at how we can describe this application logic. As we saw earlier, the first step is to obtain a message stream that corresponds to the Kafka input descriptor for player position changed event. The message stream has a type of key value of string and player position changed events. This is because messages in Kafka have a key and a value. The key in this case is a string and the value happens to be player position changed event. Let's say that we only care about videos that are first party videos. So the next step is to filter them by using the filter operator. Any form of aggregation requires that all messages corresponding to the same key be aggregated together. In this case, we don't know how our Kafka topic would be partitioned by, so we'll use the partition by operator to partition it by the key of our choice. Here's the windowing operation we want to do. For each session, we would like to compute aggregate view time for our video. And each session is identified by a session ID which is present in the incoming player position changed event. For operations like these, SAMHSA has a built-in operator which we call as a session window. In this case, we have events corresponding to different sessions and you want to aggregate all events for a particular session together. 
The session window operator has the following parameters. First, you will need to specify what the key is to aggregate the individual messages. In this case, we'll just use the session ID as the key from the incoming message. The next property determines when to actually close a session. A session is typically described by some period of inactivity. If there are no events for a particular session ID, for a duration determined by the session gap, then we can safely assume that the user left the session and emit results for that session. The next two parameters of the window are an initial value function and an aggregate function. The initial value function gets applied when the window is first created, and the aggregate function gets applied each time a new message is added to the window. For example, if you're computing page views, a good example of an initial page view count would be zero, and the aggregate function would just simply increment the previously observed value by one for each message being processed. In this case, for each new window, we'll create a play analytics data object, and for each message that's added to the window, we'll keep updating that object with fields from the current message. Once the window is complete, we'll use a final map to format the results of the window and then use the send to operator to emit the processed output to our analytics stream. That completes our high level API example where we saw how we can describe a complex pipeline using SAMHSA's message streams and operators in very few lines of code. Thank you.